I was reading public relations pioneer Edward Bernays' book, Propaganda, and a line he wrote jumped out at me. The crowd is female. This was expressed after discussing French social scientist Gustave Le Bon's 1896 book, The Crowd, where he gave the world its first textbook on mass psychology. Bernays threw in his two cents, asserting that the crowd is female. As a marketing expert, he was right. Women to this day, a hundred years later, still do most of the shopping. It bears repeating that women are the top marketing opportunity in today's economy. They make 85% of all consumer purchasing decisions and account for $7 trillion in consumer and business spending. Of course, Bernays' claim to fame is that he used mass media to convince women to smoke. He was given a contract by the tobacco lobby to try to market cigarettes to women so that they could double their profits. Bernays marketed cigarettes to them as symbols of freedom, independence, glamour. He hired actresses to smoke. He pulled public relations stunts where flappers pulled out their cigarettes in defiance of the patriarchy. In summation, he tricked them into being good consumers and hornswoggled millions into getting cancer. But he did so understanding mass psychology and getting the fact that fundamentally the crowd is female. The political class conceives of the crowd as male. They imagine mobs with pitchforks and torches, but it's not. In fact, it's female, like Hitler's audiences. They were overwhelmingly female. Likewise, Beatle concerts were overwhelmingly female. Men are lone wolves. They typically don't like crowds or going to civic functions. It's axiomatic that church attendance is dominated by women. People who start book clubs and stuff are overwhelmingly female. The so-called new right has a female problem, with people like Nick Fuentes famously saying that women should stay out of politics. Like, because like, okay, you're not married. Right. You know, you know, not a big fan of the females. No, I'm not a fan. Explain to me why. Like, because obviously this this comes out of the fact this is like a deeper you know issue with the fact that from like the porn culture and the the model of the ecam the simp culture like men are not finding partners and also men are not you know becoming men that women want to marry. It's vice versa, right? It's like we're in this weird sort of world, but you're just by choice. Yeah, well, you know, I, I feel like I am sort of the real inheritor of the legacy of, you know, great geniuses, philosophers. I point this out on my show often. When you think about, like, Aristotle, Thomas Aquinas, Schopenhauer, they all had a very specific take on women, which is that they're sort of like the inferior gender. And I point this out on my show. You know, if you believe in the Bible, if you're a Christian, in the story creation, man is created in the image of God. Woman is made from man's rib. And so when you think about it this way, the genesis of a woman is really from a piece of man. So how can a woman have comparable faculties or superior faculties really in any way to a man if she's made from a man's rib? So, you know, I'm basically just against this whole, you know, some people say they're against feminism or third wave feminism. I'm against this whole feminized society. I'm against, because we really live in a thoroughly feminist world order and I reject the whole thing. You know, people say patriarchy, this and that. I'm probably even more extreme than that. I just want to return to, you know, the old, the old world, the old way of doing things. There's also people like Stefan Molyneux, whose rants have been said to sometimes tip over into misogyny. Women who choose the assholes will f***ing end this race. They will f***ing end this human race if we don't start holding them a accountable. Women who choose holes guarantee child abuse. Women who choose guarantee criminality, sociopathy, politicians. All the cold-hearted jerks who run the world came out of the vaginas of women who married holes. Jordan Peterson likewise markets to young males. Even Joe Rogan, who's not on the right, exists as a safety valve to channel young men away from a consciousness of themselves as a group and to get them to watch sports and smoke weed, neutralize them as a political force. By ignoring women, all these people are missing the mark. As a social force, women are of inestimable value. Get the women and you will get the men. Just ask the serpent in the Garden of Eden. The oligarchs understand this, which is why it was women who drove social compliance during the most recent crisis. See, white liberal women were most gullible in getting jabbed for COVID research fines. By the time the third and now fourth injections for Wuhan coronavirus, COVID-19, came around, most men, Hispanics, and blacks had already figured out the scam and said, no way, Jose. Most college-indoctrinated white women, though, were eager to get triple injected, a new poll has found. It was women who bullied people into compliance, women who drove the mobilization of the new normal, women who indoctrinated the children. 
Any movement that doesn't understand the critical importance of women as a social force is doomed to failure, which is why certain elements within the new right are being encouraged to shoot themselves in the foot by taking an almost misogynistic stance. Kind of like how the oligarchs try to divide black from white, rich from poor, Catholic from Protestant. Likewise, they love movements which drive genders apart, like feminism teaching women to spurn men, or the new men going their own way movement, which is teaching young men to act like the he-man woman haters club from the little rascals. The meeting is now in order. We all know that the McGillicuddy girls gave a party the other day, and not one of us was invited. Now what do you say if we form a new club and call it the He-Men Woman Haters Club? <coughs> now I think we ought to have a president. must be the worst woman hater of us all. So I nominate Alfalfa because he hates women. Terrifying how much Spanky looks and sounds like fellow Texan Alex Jones, isn't it? We live in a world filled with fear and intimidation so that the truth won't be spoken. Presented by The New American, The Ben Armstrong Show says the things others are afraid to say. Find information and truth to arm you against the lies. Watch every weekday on thenewamerican.com.